Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of The Couch Crocheter. We are on episode 90, One Finished Object. Woot woot! Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Couch Crocheter. This episode, I'm going to go over one finished object. It is my cardigan. I finished it. Future me is going to insert a video here of past me who did have a little bit of problem with not the pattern, um, just how it fit. Um, so here's that clip now that I'm going to insert. Hi guys, this is Future Dawn. I'm up here crocheting. Don't mind me. I'm in my pajamas. It's like three in the morning. I'm shooting this video. I did just finish the sleeve of the, again, I'm in my pajamas, so don't mind me. <laughs> I did finish the sleeve. So this is the original sweater, right? And then the sleeve for the original pan panel ends here. And then this is the sleeve that I just did. I don't know if I like it. I think I might rip it out and not do the decrease. I think that with the sleeve starting here, it kind of looks a little ridiculous. <laughs> I feel like a hobo. Um, and Pamela's, when she did her video, she did do it all one color, so I feel like hers wouldn't be as obvious. But this is definite, like, obvious. Like, my arm should, like, start back here. And then I'm um, this much short. And I even added um, like the cuff that I wanted. Um, so I even added one more row. I don't think that I made the armhole too small. I think that that part is just fine. I think I'm just going to rip all this out and not do a decrease. Here's to frogs. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> so guys, I did end up doing just all of the rounds um, without a decrease until I got right here at the sleeve. And then I did one round of decrease. And then I did, if you can see here, um, it was double crochet, front post, back post, double crochet, just to make it a little more cuff. And then I did um, one single crochet for the actual border. So everything else, I followed the pattern um, from Pamela at Pamela's Adoring Crochet. The pattern is called the Essentials Sweater. I will link that down below. And again, the only thing that I changed was I did not decrease at all on the sleeve until I got to the very last row. So guys, here was what it looks like on. I do love it. I think it turned out fabulous. She did. Oh, I did tuck in my end. I just have to clip him. I tucked them all in, but I didn't clip them. <laughs> I clipped the ones on the sleeve. Um, she did the um, border, so I did that. I followed that. I followed the panel. One of the panel was attached um, when you worked the back, but I did, um, did I? Yes, I did detach it and start over because I wanted this side to kind of be matchy-matchy. Now, it did not turn out perfect. Um, like, as you can see, this panel starts up a little higher with this color and this color is kind of like down here so it is off um the sleeves are off by like five rows um you know it's not perfect but it's mine and i love it um next time i do this and i think i am going to do it again i think i'm going to um let me get back over here i think i'm going to do it all one color like she did. I just sort of should have should have followed suit and did it all in one color. Um, and I think I'm going to attempt it in. And I say all one color, but it's really not all one color. I don't know if I have enough. 
I don't know yet. We'll get there. Because I do want it variegated. But then I also don't want um, to worry about color coordinating like I attempted with this one. I may have failed, but I attempted it and I'm okay with that. I'm very proud. Um, this is the second cardigan that I made. The first one um, was from Krista at the Secret Yarnery. And I think that the last time I mentioned it, I did not call it by its correct name. I do believe that she calls it the Party Cardi. Um, I did do that one and I did that one out of the latte cakes. That one I'm just gonna wear camping. This one is gonna be more or less saved for next winter around the shouse because that by that time we will definitely um, be moved in. Um, we have just a little quick update, um, you know, in case you're wondering, we have, we just paid this month's payment and then one more payment and then it's paid off and then the electrician is coming in to do his thing and then we have to save up for the next thing and save up for the next thing. So I do realize that, again, this will take a while and it's okay. Um, so this will be packed away up here at headquarters until next winter when I can actually wear it again because, you know, now it's spring. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And definitely go check out um, her pattern. Oh, let me go over what I used and how many. Where is it? Okay, here it is. Uh, I used Mandala Tweed Stripes. One um, cake has 5.3 ounces or 150 grams, 426 yards or 390 meters. It is a, a medium number four. They ask for a size seven or 4.5 um, needle size or a 5.5 or I9 in the hook size. This particular um, color is wishbone and it is made in probably Turkey, I believe. Yep, made in Turkey, 100% acrylic. Um, so I ended up using one for the back, one for these, nope, a half for these, and then I use the other half for the sleeves. So it's one, two, two whole cakes. Um, I believe two whole cakes. So what is that? Like 800, 900, no, 852 yards is what I believe I, I may have, wait, let me think. This is the oddball. And I did use, oh, and you know what? I did use a little bit more. I'm lying because this is the oddball and I still have two cakes over there and I had two, two three packs, so it would have been six, three, yeah, three. Okay, so the border here, um, I did end up using um, a little bit of a cake um, because I did bust into this one and then I still have two full cakes and I had two um, packs and there's three in a pack. So yeah, I finished it and I'm very, very proud of myself. Now I'm going to take this off. It is warm today. Um, it was like 70 degrees today. Ooh. And this is very, very warm, which I'm grateful for because that is going to become nice and handy Ooh, over on the couch. Okay. And the winter fall time. So I'm going to finish this video off with my daily reading of Melody B. Tai, Journey to the Heart, Daily Meditation on the Path to Freeing Your Soul. And I am on January 10th. Let me just grab my coffee. I'm on January 10th. Free yourself from manipulation. Learn to, learn to recognize past aggressive hints. Learn to recognize when other people have hidden agendas. When, you're trying, when they're trying to control or manipulate you. When you're being controlled, you may feel guilty, obligated, 
indebted. In our muddled state, we agree to others' wishes, but we're not sure why. When we wander around feeling uncertain, unbalanced, and confused, the lesson still isn't about them. The lesson is about how we respond. If their behavior, their energy is affecting us that strongly, it's because something in us needed to be healed. A part of us isn't clear is still mucked up by something old and outworn, such as guilt or fear. Once we heal, heal ourselves, we will know how to deal with their energy, how to handle their past aggressive behavior and their attempt to control us. Then we can thank them for helping trigger our healing process and helping us grow. Everything that happens along the way is part of a journey. Everything can be incorporated into our healing process. All roads lead to growth. So guys, that is all I have for today's episode. Thank you so much for stopping by. Be safe and stay groovy. Bye.